Hello and welcome, aloha, to another episode of The Nonprofit Show. Thrilled to have all of you back with us today. And we are really excited for our guest again, James Golder, joining us yet again with Bloomerang. Thrilled to have you here. Today, James is going to talk to us about stewarding event attendees. So stay Love with it. us because we're going to really uh, dive deep on this conversation as a lot of you are starting to have events again. So Julia Patrick, hello to you, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I'm Jarrett Ransom, Julia's personal nonprofit nerd, but I'm yours too. There's plenty of nerdiness to go around. Um, CEO of the Raven Group, and I'm honored to serve alongside as co-host uh, here for the show. We are always honored to have our amazing guest, including Bloomerang, that has been with us from the very beginning. So thank you so very much again to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University, Be Generous, your part-time controller, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, and nonprofit nerd. These companies keep us growing, evolving in these conversations that we have over three years. We've talked about events, but not in the way we're going to talk about it today. So if you miss any of today's episode or you wish to share it with those um, in your network, make sure that you go ahead and find us. You can find all of our archives as well, 600 plus episodes on Roku, YouTube, Amazon Fire TV, Vimeo, as well as podcasts. So if you're a podcast listener, go ahead and queue us up in the podcast channels wherever you stream your podcast. James, we are thrilled to have you. Uh, you have joined us before, and so you're back by popularity, thrilled to to open up your brain and get some more information out. So again, you serve as the partnerships manager at Bloomerang. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Thanks. Uh, thank you again for, for having me. I'm thrilled to, to hang out with you all for a little while. Um, my job at Bloomerang is to work with uh, what we call national accounts. Uh, so YMCA's, Boys and Girls Clubs, places that have a, a big national focus, but then maybe smaller regional, local presence, whether it's a chapter, an affiliation, whatever they happen to call it. So uh, I work with a whole lot of different organizations to get them on board with Bloomerang and then also to help them uh, just uh, Im improve their fundraising if I can. Uh, so stuff around donor retention, which we talked about last time, and then this time with events, try to step up the knowledge out there a little bit. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you for that. And tell us, how does stewarding event attendees tie into a donor database? What is that connection? Yeah. Yeah, it's a great question. So a lot of times people look at uh, event attendees almost as separate from their regular donors, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I think that's I think that's a mistake, to be really honest. I think that you're spending a fair amount of money on these events. And you want to pull in people as much as possible, uh, and and you want to introduce them right to the the wonderful things that your nonprofit is doing, your mission, how the how you're impacting the community, all of those things uh, that that you want to take uh, great pains to to show them what you're doing, mm -hmm. and then not do anything with them after that. Why, why, why they they came, they bought a ticket or someone bought a ticket for them or something. And they were exposed to all the cool things that you're doing. So why not take the opportunity and, and keep sharing with them, keep that dialogue going. Well, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing because I think a lot of times when we um, in the nonprofit sector have an event, we think we are cultivating dollars and you're mm. here to say, no, we're really cultivating new donors. That's the longer term issue, isn't it? It is. Uh, I think back to the events that I've attended uh, that, you know, with, where my wife and I have been invited to any number of things in the community, uh, usually through a friend, uh, you know, someone is on a board or a big supporter or something like that. And they say, hey, would you guys want to come with us? And we've we've gone and done that. And to be honest, there's been uh, events that the follow up hasn't been great and we don't we haven't really done anything with them after that. Uh, it was a one and done. We paid for the tickets. We maybe, maybe bought an auction item or something, maybe. And that's it. And, and we're not 
super wealthy people or anything like that, but we certainly are capable of recurring donations, uh, you know, even some decent sized one time gifts. I mean, if you cultivate that relationship with us as evidenced by the other organizations that did follow up yeah. and that we do stay in touch with and continue to support, even though we've never really used their services or never really been personally impacted by them, but we showed up, we liked what we saw, and then they followed up. I mean, that's, you know, that's kind of the name of the game. That should be the goal, I think. I hear this all too often. You know, it's like we didn't hear from this organization until it's time to invite me again next year. And that's really disappointing. But it also speaks to the donor retention. And you alluded the previous episode with you, James, was donor retention. And um, so we, we've got to do a better job at this. We really do. It's so important. I go back again to the ROI, right? The, how much money are is your organization spending on uh, on this event? Uh, you've got to get a venue, take care of food. If there's an alcohol budget, good luck with that. Uh, get all of the the you know prizes and auction items and all. So a lot of those you're not paying for but you are paying for staff time or someone's time to go and get all of that taken care of. And then think about the next, the the, sort of the next level of time management there. Even if you've got volunteers handling all the auction stuff and that's, that's great. Your staff still has to coordinate a lot. Uh, There's, you know, times and, and just all kinds of stuff that they're having to keep track of. And what is that preventing them from doing? So what are they not able to do because they're focused on this event? Are they, uh, maybe having phone calls slip through the cracks? Should they be reaching out to major donors and cultivating those relationships? Could they be identifying new potential major donors? So you're you're spending a lot of time and a lot of money. And you have to you have to try to retain these people. It just it, it doesn't. Yeah, you get a nice big bump and your board says, oh, we made X amount of money at this event. That's great. Sure, but you have to factor in the cost as well as the opportunity cost that you lost by devoting so much staff time to that. That all has to be factored into the equation. And your board needs to to realize that. And and honestly, and I can say this as a board member of a small organization, get them involved with some of the follow-up and get them to to get off the bench a little bit and uh, and get in the game. And, And that will you'll you'll really start playing the long game at that point right and you'll you'll uh get those those attendees who come back and become donors year after year after year and that should be the the goal yeah i love that you mentioned the board could you speak a little bit because i know a lot of events incorporate a committee an event committee how do the committee members play a role in stewarding the event attendees So I think there's a couple of things that they can do. Uh, clearly, they're going to usually anyway, be the ones to go after those auction items and all of that kind of stuff. That's invaluable. You have to have that. I would also tell them to keep their eyes on who is registering. So what I mean by that is if you have a corporation, let's say, and they have bought a table at a gala, pay attention to that. Pay attention to those people who are sitting at the table, but then also who's the main driver at that corporation? Is it Who's the one who's extending those invitations out to people? Uh, in addition, uh, just look at, at, if you can figure out, uh, look at the other attendees and figure out who's inviting these people, because those are the people that those committee members should be spending some time with and getting to know a little bit. If someone is saying, I'm going to take time out of my day to invite my friends, my family, my coworkers to this organization event that's important to me, let's find out more about that. Let's dig into that a little bit and see what's going on. And and maybe we can uncover some more potential there, Uh, maybe volunteering, maybe donations. It, It could be board membership. There could be a lot of avenues that you could go down, but you have to start digging a little. I love that. You know, I'm, I'm intrigued by, by the um the conundrum that a lot of event folks they're just like fill the room versus fill the room with the people that are going to make a difference Mm -hmm. and it's a really interesting conversation i'll man up i was in one of those conversations yesterday starting at 3 30 and it lasted an hour and a half and it seems really difficult to say, no, we need more people of capacity, not just check writing, but who they know and connectivity. 
And yeah. don't just preach to the choir or your sister-in-law who already knows. And um, I would love to get your feedback on that because as stewarding our guests at events, it seems like we can be just talking to the same people versus understanding this is that new opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's exactly right. And I, I think that we do fall into that trap sometimes where, like you said, Julia, we just want to fill the room. So at, you know, two weeks before we don't have enough tickets sold. We need to cut the ticket prices. We need oh. to, you know, throw an ad up on the radio or something. Ah, you know, and uh, okay. I, I get it. Uh, but also, it's not a bad idea to be a little bit more purposeful on the front end when you're planning this and to ask your board members and your your big supporters to tap into their networks purposefully. Like you said, Julie, I think that's a good word. Not just, uh, yeah, I've got my contact list. I can send an email to 50 people or whatever, yeah. but really spend a couple of minutes and think through what is it that I'm hoping to accomplish here? It, uh, obviously, we're nonprofits. We want people who can write big checks. Yeah. Clearly, that should be at the top. I, I get it. But also think about people who know lots of other people in your community who might be interested in the kind of work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Who are the connectors that you can reach out to through your existing supporter network and say, hey, this is the work that we're doing. We need a little bit of help. And we think that you might be able to make some of those connections for us. So the more that you can be purposeful, I think, on the front end before you really get started selling tickets and getting auction items and all of that, maybe it's a thinking exercise with your committee where you just say, you know, give us 10 names. Yeah, big checks. That's great. But also, you know, connectors, uh, networking people. Let's let's try to think through this and, and be very purposeful before we get started. I love it. Now, along, a follow up question to that. What are your thoughts are in terms of stewarding these guests? Are, are you, do you want people, it used to be back in the day that you were having an event, you would try not to invite people who didn't know you or who hadn't been on the tour. Mm. What are your thoughts about that, given not just the past couple of years, but technology and how we can ultimately steward guests? I think that's that can be a big part of what the event is, uh, right? Is is kind of a tour okay. almost, maybe not at the facility, but okay. it can be a tour of what okay. we're doing, uh, and there should be some emotional impact. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if if you're helping uh, kids learn how to read, if you're putting food on the table for members in the community, providing a you know place for um, animals to get adopted, you know, any of these, any of these things that, that, uh, nonprofits do each and every day, tell us about it. Uh, and, and if you can bring in someone who you serve directly and let them tell us about it, uh, let them tell their story. I, I realize privacy concerns and all that totally. So it's not always an option, but if it is an option, do that because those are really powerful. And then you're kind of giving that tour at the event you're making that emotional connection. You're showing what the impact can be. Uh, that's going to stay with people a little bit longer than if you just, you know, hand them a pamphlet or direct them to your website or something. Right. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, that's needed. I've been to so many events that, you know, I haven't known about the organization before, but they have that mission critical moment. Yeah. Of course, I'm crying. Of course, I'm feeling it in my body. And I'm thinking, I had no idea this existed in my community. And so to capture, I like to say, let's capture that magic and like sprinkle it right uh, throughout the rest of the year. And I think that follow up communication so that we don't only say, come to the event. And then, oh, yeah, you'll get an invite again next year. Because to your point, <laughs> Julia, we are preaching to the same choir then. Yeah, yeah. We've got to be looking at this. So, James, let's dig into this post-event uh, communication and contact. What are some of the great things that you're seeing? And I got to ask you another a side question. Um, how does Bloomerang factor into this? Because I don't see your company as a company that does this piece. Are you telling me that that you do or kind of paint us the picture about how how we can navigate this? Because this is a heavy lift for a lot of organizations. It is. And and we do. Bloomerang does handle some event management. Uh, and then there are other uh, events uh, where a, a prospective client will come to us and they'll say, hey, can you all handle a silent auction, for instance? And we'll say, nope. 
but we have partners who can, and we can <laughs> direct you towards those people. Yeah, um, yeah we don't, yeah, not going to lie to people. Uh, my I eyes got that. really big. I was like, yeah. what? Yeah. I love that clarity. Are you like, nope, we don't do nope. that, but we know who does. Yeah. <laughs> we're good at what we're good at, and that's not it. Um, uh, but we are good at helping our users retain donors. Uh, and, and so what we saw uh, a while back was that organizations were getting better at retaining, you know, regular donors, direct mail, online donations, things like that, but really not as much with event donors. Uh, so we dug into it a little bit more. And uh, Jared, you and I have talked about this some. Uh, Bloomerang is full of nerds. Uh, there's really no other way to put it. Uh, and, uh, and we're all proud of it. See, you look so happy. Um, I am so happy. Music to my ears. <laughs> we uh, were very, very data driven. As much as a cliche that statement is, it's very true. And we look at our users' data uh, often uh, and try to find trends. And one of the big trends that we found, uh, I guess a couple of years ago now, was the impact that phone calls made after someone makes their first donation. So if we think about what an event, you know, ideally maybe is designed to do, it should be to get those first time donors in the door. Uh, it should get other people as well, but we should be getting some first timers in the door. And then we need to follow up with them to turn them into regular donors after that. And a phone call is the fastest, easiest way to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, we, we looked at three areas and we saw improvements in all three, speed to second gift, uh, the size of the second gift and whether how likely they were to be retained. So the, here's the big one for, for the audience here. Uh, the size of the second gift doubled with a phone call. Oh no, with two phone calls. I think it was with two phone calls doubled. Yeah. Wow. Does that absolutely. mean back to back? Like you call, you hang up, you call again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yep. Leave two messages in five minutes. That's, That's right. No, no. Um, no, the strategy that, uh, that, that I have always suggested is, again, pull your board members in there. They'll hate it. They'll come kicking and screaming until they actually do it, and then they'll be fine. I we'll love it. Um, I speak from experience. Yeah. Um, but uh, pull your board members in. Have them call and have them kind of set the table a little bit and talk through, you know, this is what's coming up in the next couple of months. Our development director is probably going to reach out to you and ask if you would like to be further involved. No ask, just a thank you. That's yeah. it. And then have someone on the development team follow up a week, two weeks, three weeks, you know, what uh, schedules are schedules, figure it out and, and have the development team call and then maybe make an ask, but you'd be smart about it uh, and, and figure out what the connection is. Find out if you can, why they came to the event, what appealed to them. What about that emotional impact at the event stayed with them? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So emotions fade. But what do they remember from that a couple of weeks later? What stands out to them when they think about your mission and, and how would they like to be involved moving forward? I love your comment so bluntly, James, because you're speaking as a board member where you said earlier, you're like, get off the bench, get in the yeah. game, <laughs> pick up the phone, make those phone calls. And you're right. It's so important. And to see that second gift increase and to retain that donor because we are now stewarding them, right? Yeah. We are cultivating them, not their money, them as people. So yeah. such great find, advice. If you find out what they're interested in, what attracted them and what moved them to donate at the event and what they're remembering, you can tailor your communication to them and your asks to them for some specific need that you have instead of just saying, hey, we need money. Right. It can be, hey, you're interested in right. children reading, third graders specifically. We've got this after school program at the school down the street. We really need your help to expand it, you know, and go from there. That's so much more impactful moving forward. So much more impactful. And then capture this in the database, right? Yes, capture yes, the information. Please. That's a big connection of why, you know, donor databases and why stewarding event attendees, that is the secret sauce, the magic. It takes some work, but it's so worth the work and the effort. Got to have an app. I'll, I'll just, I'll throw a plug out for Bloomerang. You gotta, gotta have an app for your, for your database so that you can take notes on the go. We're all moving around all the time these days. So yeah, it's a good. good James, good tell advice. us as a board member, do you give board members access to the database or do you ask them to send their notes 
to the development team to then input the notes into the database? Good question. Yeah, we had a conversation about that. And uh, the development team made it clear that they would uh, hunt us down and do something bad if we didn't give the board members access. So we gave the board members access. <laughs> wow. That's okay. I got to do, I know that like is, we don't have a lot of time, but that to me is really interesting because my, my immediate sense is like, oh no, because that's perilous because they can screw things up. So you've, I mean, you've got to have the right system. And obviously I'm biased. I, so, uh, I, and you have to be careful with it, but if you have the right system with the right checks and balances in place, you should be okay. okay. Um, so if you can restrict access to certain parts so that board members can't enter in new donations or something like that, that's probably a good idea. Don't give them access to the email tool, you know, that kind of thing, <laughs> then great then they can look and, and see notes. They can enter in their own notes and be on their way. Okay, love that. I don't know, Jared, that to me is like the hair on fire moment because I, I never worked with an organization that did that. Everything was, you know, always funneled through development. So what I've do done do? both. I have, I have been a part of both. Um, there's some pros and cons that I've experienced on both, right? And so I think for me, it really comes down to the access point that James mentioned. Wow. Mm -hmm. I and know. I think trust too, you wanna to make sure that you do a good job training the board. Yeah. Click this, don't ever click that, that kind of stuff. And, and you know, most of them, I, in my experience, and everyone is different, but most of my board members that I work with were very hesitant at first, both about the phone calls and about the technology. Mm -hmm. And then, it took one phone call for everybody and everybody said, Oh, this, there's, there's nothing to this. This is a, this is a delightful phone call and it's an easy, you know, two minute task entering after I'm done. So it's rewarding. You hear yeah. from the donors and you're like, wow, that was actually really happy. That was a great nice. conversation. Yes. I think so. Yeah. I, I, we don't have a lot of time left, but I'm really curious to get your thoughts on, um, post event communications and, and contact, which we, you know, we've been talking about. It seems to me that we're seeing more and more, and maybe it's our community, I don't know, but post event like thank you videos. Mm -hmm. And they're short and sweet. Obviously, they've been pre done. Can you give us some thoughts on that, that tool? It is such a great idea. Uh, so there are a lot of them uh, that are available, oftentimes for free or, or pretty inexpensive for nonprofits. Some of them will integrate into different donor databases as well. So you can keep a record of that with your donor record. It's fantastic. As Jared mentioned, the more data you can have and collect and, and keep track of, the better off you're going to be. Uh, so the... and. The other nice thing that they do allow you to do, you can personalize them uh, sometimes. Some of them are so easy that it, it yeah, you can do a, a generic one shot to everybody, but some of them are so easy that uh, doing 30 seconds, you know, hey, James, thanks so much for coming to our event. I really enjoyed chatting with you. So excited that you gave uh, after the, the mission statement that we gave. Can't wait to connect with you in a couple of weeks. Off you go to the next one doesn't have to be a long script, a long, in fact, I mean, if you think about the YouTube videos that we watch, I, I hope my boss isn't watching this because I want her to think I work really hard at everything I do, but I, uh, I give up at, at, you know, a couple of minutes with a lot of YouTube videos, even training videos and all of that. I kind of get to a point where I, I realize I'm not paying attention to this anymore and I stop. So keep it short. That's uh, always, always good. I call that benchmarking, James. You got to see the trend of what's out there and what not to do. So yeah. I, I hope your boss is listening because you're doing a great work of competitive <laughs> benchmarking. I love it. Well, yeah, you know, this is great. I always think it's magical. And, and I, I think Jarrett and I would agree, you know, from day one, Boomerang has been a very interesting partner of ours because they've always shared information that's coming to them from a lot of places not just yeah. your own business and so maybe that's because you are based in the center of the country and you get to see these different things coming at us i don't know but it's really magical that you come on and and give us ideas and share with us different options um, because it's we have been forever changed there's no doubt about that 
this last couple of years in the nonprofit mm -hmm. sector. And so we need all the advice and the input, the benchmarking. Thank you, Jarrett, <laughs> that comes our way. Awesome. So, yeah, I mean, it's been really an amazing conversation. Um, for those of you who might have just joined us or um, have not heard James speak with us before, James Goler, partnerships manager, which, you know, anybody that's working on partnerships, you know, they're going to be hearing about all these different things. So you're the voice that really um, has an impact for us in the nonprofit show. I'm at Bloomerang, bloomerang.co. Check them out. It's a very interesting uh, piece. James, how many webinars are you all doing? I mean, it seems like you're doing a lot of educational webinars. We do uh, through the marketing department, one or two a week. And okay. then I do some, uh, there's a lot going on. Okay. So I'd say two to three a week on average is probably about right. Okay. Yeah. And those are accessible, whether you're a client or not? They are. And the, they're recorded, of course, so you can access the old ones and, and check out all that good information. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Really good. Well, good to know. Again, thank you so much for well, being you. with us. Um, if you joined us in the green room chatter, we were definitely conspiring to taking the show on the road to Hawaii <laughs> and because James needs some new Hawaiian shirts per yes. his wife. I do. And so yeah. we're like, we gotta, we gotta do this. You gotta help me out. I, I really appreciate the spirit of, of helpfulness uh, hey. that you all have exhibited today. It's we're wonderful. here to be of service. Absolutely. Yeah. I admire it. I really do. <laughs> I love it. Jarrett, tell everybody what's your license plate. Be of service. It reads be of service. Yeah, yeah. it really does. Yeah. There you go. But Bloomerang does. It, it has so <laughs> many great uh, resources out there. I have found, um, you know, just so many tools on the site from those webinars that you spoke of, James. And I'm just so glad for this, you know, archive of resources. I was talking to one of my clients in my executive coaching, and she says, you know, I have Googled and YouTube my way through my job. <laughs> and wow. so really, you know, looking at where can I find resources? You know, I know that, um, you know, Bloomerang puts out so many great things that donor retention, that's a good one to go back, James, that you shared with Julia and myself here on the nonprofit show, because it ties in perfectly to this stewarding your event attendees. So yeah. thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. This has been great. I'll throw out if I can real quickly, one other just little nugget that some people might like. Um, if you're doing a paddle raise in an event, think about doing a recurring donation paddle raise. Um, so you've got your big, big, big donors, right? And then you've got the rest of us. And I may not be able to write you a $5,000 check, but I might be able to do a hundred bucks a month. Yeah. So if you phrase it that way, I'm very well might jump on board with that, especially in the excitement and the emotion and all of that. So just a just a tip uh, going. That's a that. great idea. I I love love love. Okay, that's the rock star idea. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> the second hair on fire moment for Julia. Second hair on fire, and you know, James, as I'm as I like to say, I don't have a lot to give away. So it's really important when we have a two hair on fire day. So, anyway. <laughs> I feel honored. <laughs> or fearful, maybe fearful. Hey, everybody, we want to thank our presenting sponsors. Without them, we would not be here. Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, Be Generous, Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, and the Nonprofit Nerd. These are the folks that are with us day in and day out to make sure we can deliver great guests like we have James today from Bloomerang. So, share it. Thank you so much for being with us today. Um, <clears throat> do you want to say anything about what you're going to be doing next week really quickly before we go off air? We have a uh, power week, right? Yes, we do. We do. We have a power week with your part-time controller mm -hmm. and it's all going to be about the lens of operating our nonprofits through the accounting lens. And so often these things don't line up or they're very perilous or they're stressful and we don't think about it until we have a problem. So we are going to be bringing in uh, folks from all over the country from your part-time controller to be talking about different things. The exciting thing is Friday, our ask and answer, it's all going to be accounting questions. So not like, you know, do I use form 1032C or form 1023B? It's not like that. But if you have some kind of, you know, um, 
questions about the alignment um, to some of these newer pieces of accounting, a modern accounting in nonprofits, let us know and we'll try and get them in front of the experts. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you. It'll be a lot of fun. Hey, hashtag hey, Power Week, right? That's one yeah, of the that's one of our, our hashtags. <laughs> We love Nonprofit Power Week. It's a super cool thing. Hey, and we love our viewers and our listeners and our sponsors and our guests. And we like to end every episode with this mantra, to stay well so you can do well. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, James. We'll see you.